So what did Satan do? He started to work underground. Work underground. And thus came out what we know as the Counter-Reformation. What is this countering the Reformation back then? So he started the Counter-Reformation as well as Modernism. Counter-Reformation eventually evolved into Modernism. You know what today is? Today we're living in Modernism. How did we get this far, Pastor? What happened back then? Start from here. Start from here. Let's see how it evolved into modernism. While they were having their, the KJV was successful, the Great Awakening revivals was successful, Satan was going underground. The Catholic Church had to hire somebody to, to backfire, to counter this reformation during that time. The Pope hired one man, Ignatius de Loyola. He started the Jesuit order, the Society of Jesus. This man, Ignatius de Loyola, when he started the Jesuit order, he was, he was set up to counterattack, deliberately counterattack the Reformation Luther spread out. And during that time, he had to prove how... The, now, the Jesuits are no people to mess with, you got to understand, especially if you go up at a higher plane. You ever wonder why the Vatican has so many deep-seated secrets in there? And why people cannot have public access? It's because they're a secret society. You got to realize how powerful, brilliant, intelligent these men are and how dark it is as well. In fact, Loyola went through four Catholic inquisitions to prove his loyalty to the Catholic Church. These guys are die-hard people you don't want to mess with. In fact, if you read his Catholic devotion called Spiritual Exercises, it was, for, it was a training manual for his Jesuit followers. And as the people started to enter the Jesuit order, they would read the spiritual exercises, and it taught brainwashing techniques and control of Jesuits, including the very air that they breathe. If you don't believe me, look at spiritual exercises. Look that up. And what happened? Through these men, they became a very, very dark source. That, in fact, the Vatican and the Catholic Church, as they grew more in power, because remember, they were doing undercover stuff, right, during this time? These guys were dark people. They were brilliant. So the Catholic Church, what happened was this. First, they lost England. The Jesuits lost their power when the King James Bible. When the King James Bible gave birth, it was game over. The Jesuits were losing power. Protestant nations were kicking out the Jesuits, but Catholic nations were also kicking out the Jesuits because now it was a new time era now. And then the Catholic nations were kicking out the Jesuits because they realized these guys are dangerous. They're doing assassins this, assassin here, assassin there. These guys are dangerous. They started to kick them out. And in fact, it, where they had no place to go but the Vatican, the Vatican was even kicked out the Jesuits. Jesuits had no place to go. Where could they go? During this underground moment where the Jesuits had no place to go, in came your Masonic elites that time. The Masons were always around and they held power. The Jesuits fled to them. How they fled to them is that they went to the schools. Jesuits are teachers, right? During those days especially, that's a historical fact. The Jesuits, they fled into the schools and they attracted the Masonic elites that time. And because of that, what was eventually formed is they found a big donor right there named Rothschild. Rothschild, through him and certain Jewish elites, they had a funder. In fact, I don't know if you know this, he, his current title is Guardian of the Vatican's Treasury. I don't know if you knew that. Current title with the Rothschild family. But the Rothschilds and the Masons, they combined together. And through this combination, in came birth through Adam Weishaupt. And Adam Weishaupt, he is the leader and the founder of the Illuminati. How you get all these crazy conspiracies today, I don't deny a lot of it is crazy, but you got to realize this. They don't just grab those ideas out of thin air. There is some kind of historical source somewhere. The Illuminati is a historical fact during those days that if you read the presidents of the United States those times, they feared the Illuminati. They feared Adam Weishaupt that time. And the Illuminati, it was through their organization they grew into power. 
do that, the Jesuits, how we know they were involved with this, is because Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, Illuminati was founded at a Jesuit university at Bavaria. Yep. One. Number two, when they did their Scottish Rite Freemasonry oath, mm -hmm. it was a Jesuit who wrote the oath that time. Mm -hmm. So, and not only that, Weishaupt, he was trained under a Jesuit historical fact. So because of that, there is no doubt Jesuits were involved. How, what happened now? They start to conquer Catholic nation, Catholic nation through underground, through elites, through nobility. And they start to get a foothold more and more. And through elites, underground system, they finally found a person. Philip II of Spain, remember, Spanish Empire lost. It was the French Empire. Napoleon Bonaparte. Through Napoleon Bonaparte, the Jesuits used him and they restored their Knights of Malta, set one of the second most powerful elite system next to the Mason system. They got their Knights of Malta restored. Napoleon threw the Pope into prison and forced the Pope to restore the Jesuit order. That's how the Jesuit order restored its system once more. So now they were back into place. Now Satan had underground figures because if you look at Washington, D.C., you'll see so many Masonic symbols. Did you ever take a tour there? Masonic symbols all over. Do you know why? Because of back then, these elites. So while America was having revival underground, Satan was setting up a powerhouse so that he can lay control more and more and more because he couldn't get the common people. So he had to get the elites, the power who will control all the world system, the money supply, the government supply, the schools, religion, and everything. Now that he laid the foundation, what happened? It eventually transformed into the round table and Cecil Rhodes attended Masonic lodges. Illuminati was supposedly disbanded in the early days of America, but the Illuminati members, you know where they fled to? Masonic lodges. Cecil Rhodes came from the Masonic lodge and he started the round table. The round table started the second round of elites. Through the round table, that's how they get their government leaders and their elites in place with the uh, founding of Israel in 1947 to 1948. They also go through American system, through Queen Victoria's successful reign, and they were just spreading all over. They were spreading all over. You've heard of Rhodes Scholars as well, right? All of that through here, the round table. And the evidence is, if you look at this, look at the evidence of current elite systems, current elite systems today. CFR, the Bilderbergers, all those kind of stuff that you heard about the elites. Where did all that come from? All of that, if you go back to their founders, the people who run it, Rockefellers, Chase Morgan Bank, and all those guys, it goes to the founders of the round table. And by the way, Rothschild, Nathan Rothschild, was involved with this round table at that time. That's where you get your current elites today and government leaders today. It all comes from here. And who started it all? The Catholic Church. That's why, what did the Bible say about Rome at the end times? She's going to burn up at the end because they always had a play of power ever since the beginning of Bible-believing church history to now. Now, the, now, you got the pieces in place. The dominoes are about to roll. It started to go... Boom, boom, boom. Jesuits plan, they always go 50 to 100 years ahead. Thus came higher and lower criticism. Higher and lower criticism, what they did is that they started to question the teachings of Christianity and the authenticity of the Bible. What happened was, is that because the Jesuits plan go 50 to 100 years ahead, while the Reformation and the Great Awakenings were running, they were going underground with higher and lower criticism during that time. Through higher and lower criticism, they started to attack by infiltrating schools. And the evidence is, look at all the schools during those days and see how many Jesuits were involved and how many scholars respected those Jesuit teachers and professors and intellectuals. In fact, it is uh, estimated they infiltrated more than hundreds of schools and universities. Higher and lower criticism started somewhere, it go to France. Where it started at France, thus they had the French Enlightenment at that time. From there, then it spread to Germany, the heart of the Reformation. And that's where German rationalism was spreading at that time. 
Then what happened? Then it started to spread from Germany all the way to England, the heart of the King James Bible. They infiltrated England, England through English deism. See, always through higher and lower criticism, through those means. And then finally to America, the heart of the Great Awakening revivals. It's schools. What did Hitler once say? Give me control of the schools and I'll brainwash all the generations. Why, did, why is it that younger people don't understand what we believed, our morals we held up to? You wonder why. It's through the schools. Higher and lower criticism. Thus, they succeeded in attacking and demolishing the Great Awakening revival. In the Counter-Reformation, you see how they tackled all of America through, and the world with higher and lower criticism. Now let's start the domino effect. The philosophers. Remember back at Alexandria, Egypt? Remember those uh, philosophers right here? Philosophy? So philosophy was revived. Due to higher and lower criticism in the higher education system, the philosophers finally made a breakthrough into the schools through these means. Because these means use higher criticism, lower criticism, which match the thinking of the philosophers. So the philosophers started critiquing the Bible through higher and lower criticism that was started by the Jesuits. That's why you have David Hume, John Locke, Thomas Hobbes, Rene Descartes, Francis Bacon, Friedrich Nietzsche, etc. And so they were able to use the higher and lower criticisms of Jesuits for their critiques about Christianity as a whole. Thus, we see right here that schools have fallen. Schools fell. So that's one significant issue, is schools. The next thing that Satan attacked was science through Charles Darwin. Darwin, he, would, he was actually a bachelor's degree in a theology. Uh, he was a seminary student, believe it or not. But th degree. Yeah, that was his only degree, that's right. And he started questioning our creation with evolution's origin of species. Finally, there was a way to get rid of God creating us through scientific, quote-unquote, scientific means of evolving. So many scientists immediately joined the bandwagon and expanded the evolution ideas even more. Thus, science fell. Then the next domino effect, it started to go one by one. Then you got Westcott and Hort. Westcott and Hort, they introduced the idea of having a better Bible than the King James Bible. You know what manuscripts they used? All the way back, don't forget, Alexandria, Egypt, their manuscripts, digging up the garbage piles of manuscripts over there, the garbage manuscripts over there. They used it for Catholic Vaticanus and Alexandrian Sinaiticus to revise the King James Version. Thus came out their masterpiece, the Revised Version. And you know what happened? There are more than 200 revised translations as a result because of this breakthrough. What happened? Bible fell. Now the Bible fell. Okay, you don't have Bible to rescue you. You don't have science to explain it for you. you schools can't definitely rescue you. What else can you turn to? Well, Satan just started attacking more and more and more. Then there was a person named Karl Marx. He was once from a Lutheran family. What happened? Luther's Reformation, the Reformation, the Revival Era, etc. Karl Marx, he was from a Lutheran family, but he created socialism on how the government was not getting control of making sure everyone had an equal amount of wealth. And you know what, since he was a journalist, the power of the media, he had that backing. Through the power of the media, he immediately spread his ideas. Many sinners who were convicted by the great awakening preaching wanted somebody else, the government, to take care of them instead of them working for themselves, instead of them getting themselves right with God, cleaning up their lifestyles. They were sick and tired of preaching Preachers saying, it's their fault, it's their fault, it's their fault. They want somebody else to take care of the problems for them. So, which endangered many to fall prey and being dependent on the government, just like back in the dark ages, you revived it, you just depend on the church state system to take care of everything for you. 
And thus, what happened? The government fell. What's significant now is the government fell. So one by one by one, Satan was attacking more and more and more. Another one is Hollywood. Hollywood. So how the devil attacked our world? How did our world change? It's because of uh, Hollywood. Holly world. <laughs> Hollywood. It is pretty much Holly world, amen. <laughs> So because of Hollywood, how the devil corrupted our younger generation's thinking and dropped morality in every generation is that it glamorized worldly dressing, it glamorized worldly music, worldly entertainment, and worldly conversation, thinking, and behavior, and attitude. And that influenced the minds of later generations who watch their favorite hero on the screen, their favorite hero they listen to, and then what their friends talk about during school breaks and during their socializing times. The music that they listen to, the shows that they watch, and the garbage that the news media talk about that a lot of later generations are just eating up like flies. And that includes the internet as well. So with all of this media, media nonsense, with the power of Hollywood, what happened? It became a mighty success where younger generations saw Christianity as too strict, formal, holy than thou, too upright, too stuck up. That's right. They want to be loose and free. You mean rebellious. That's what That's it means. Right. They want to dress like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, think like the world, and no preacher is going to tell them what to do that, hey, that's wrong. That's right. So because of that, now what happened? Because it glamorized so much of the world, that's why you got the whole world that fell. The world fell. What else is next? Then you got Sigmund Freud. I mean, you got nothing else but your conscience, your own conscience to tell you what's right and wrong. But Sigmund Freud, he gave psychological explanations for human guilt. And he also criticized the kind of preaching that you hear from the Great Awakenings. He criticized that kind of attitude, that kind of conversation. Things that will get your conscience under conviction over your sin. So now you can explain away your sin, your human guilt, through psychological means. Now what happened because of this nut job? Because of him, conscience fell. Conscience fell. And then when there's no other place to turn to, now the devil can finally attack the churches where all the Great Awakening Revival preachers are at. They are under this great pressure, see? Because all foundations were destroyed. Now the churches started to fall apart. In came the cults. Cults were born. Seventh-day Adventism, started by Ellen G. White. Mormonism by Brigham Young, sprouted in Utah. Jehovah's Witnesses by Charles Russell, sprouted in New York. Christian Science by Mary Baker Eddy. The Church of Christ by Alexander Campbell, sprouted all over the South. The Charismatics and Pentecostals, Episcopalians with their healings and speaking of tongues sprouted out in California through the Azusa Los Angeles revival which infested all Protestant denomination churches consequently. The hyper dispensationalist, the hyper dispensationalist by Cornelius Stamm sprouted in New Jersey ruining the doctrine of dispensationalism the most important study for your Bible in finding right doctrine. As a result of the mess of the so-called different Christians, how many of you heard them call them Christian? Yeah. How many of you heard them call them, the Bible is our final authority? You have to check the Bible to see if we're right. The Bible, what does the Bible really say? See that? Because of this utter confusion now, with this mess of so-called Christian churches, now you got so many differences that it, it gets all Christian churches tired of fighting and bickering with one another. So we should all unite, and thus was created the ecumenical movement under the host of the Pope at the Vatican during all those big events. Right. Thus you got the ecumenical movement and the Vatican finally succeeded in gathering all these branches and splits that departed from Mother Church finally coming back under one fold and one shepherd all united once more. Thus the Vatican and the devil succeeded. This is proven by looking up every denominational organization and Bible committee among Protestant churches and see if they will have some kind of Catholic leader as part of their group. And that is proven 
that the Vatican thus has a worldwide effect among Protestant churches. But not only Christian religions, they infiltrated Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, and all other world religions. They would gather in their ecumenical meetings hosted by the Pope. Thus, what happened? The churches were falling apart. And not only did this mess of cults create a unity, one world government, one world religion, with the ecumenical movement, it also caused further splits and further divisions. Because of the arrogance and pride of Christians today, what happens now is that they're going all over YouTube and bickering and eating each other up like little children. And the only people they can pick on is Bible believers. That's all the people they can pick on, not the real enemies and the heretics out there. And because of that, the New World Order, while they're uniting and growing more, these internet losers are also creating the split and the falling part and the falling away. That's why churches fall. Oh, churches are falling into apostasy. Yeah, because of you. You can't blame the church entirely. It's because of you too. So because of that, that's why no one was gathering into churches. And churches were falling apart. Thus churches fell. Satan won. Satan won his battle right here. Thus, because now think of it as a whole now. Think of this as a whole. Look at all this. Look at all this. Think of it as a whole. If school, science, Bible, government, powers, the conscience, your own conscience can't even rescue you, the churches and the whole world run by Hollywood, all of that, all of that taken over by this, what other thing and source can you turn to for rescue, for hope? That's right. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing was there to rescue you because everything now Satan infiltrated. Yep. He infiltrated every single means. No wonder some of you took you this long to find That's Bible believing right. truth. Yeah. You know why? Everything was taken over by the devil. Nothing, you got nothing else to turn to except a government controlled Hollywood and school brainwashed world under a Catholic banner. And yeah. Satan won. That's Satan true. won. Satan won. Yeah. That's how he turned the tables against the Bible believers. And thus Satan won, and the world we live in today has fallen apart. What other hope can we turn to? What is the hope? What the Lord did was he revived, he sent certain revivers for the last day. And this is what you need to hear. This is you. It is totally up to you now. The apostasy is because of you. It's because you're not part of a proud line of Bible believers. You want to split apart and contribute this movement. That's what you want to do. The Lord raised up revivers <coughs> for last day revival. He realized that there were two means to clean up all of this mess, or three means, excuse me, three means to clean up all of this mess. The first thing was...